It's Alan Seppenwall from HitFix.com here for another installment of Ask Alan, where I take your questions about the past, present, and future of TV. We've got three questions this week. First one comes from Jim, who asks, Can you account for the persistent reflex among both critics and fans of mentioning the Emmys whenever an actor, writer, or director does something skillful, given that few, if any, of them believe the Emmys to be even close to a realistic barometer of quality? It's funny that you should ask this, Jim, because a bunch of the questions that I'm not taking this week because I don't have time involve people saying, what do you think the Leftovers' chances are for Emmys? What do you think Fargo's chances are for Emmys? When is Nick Offerman finally going to get an Emmy nomination? So... This is definitely a phenomenon, and and I do it too, and, you know, Feinberg and I, when we did the podcast, we would often talk about, like, is this someone's Emmy episode? And I think part of the reason is, even though the Emmys have lots and lots of problems, they're still viewed as, that's the historical record, in the same way that the Oscars are. Uh, and, the you know, people always go nuts because the Oscar-winning Best Picture is rarely the best picture from that year. Often the Emmy-winning Best Comedy or Best Drama is not the best show on TV that year. But sort of, if you're looking back through history, that's sort of the bar that people are looking at to say, this was the best, this was not. Um... And so from that degree, it's frustrating that, um, you know, Martin Sheen never won an Emmy for The West Wing, that Nick Offerman was never nominated for an Emmy for playing Ron Effing Swanson, let alone having won one. So to that degree, that's why I care about it. And it's still sort of looked on as validation. It's the industry saying that they agree with you about your favorite show or your favorite performer, or your favorite episode or whatever. And so I get that even though I agree with you that the Emmys are kind of a mess and it's probably better not to sweat too much about them. Tom Mark says, I'm coming to the realization that The Walking Dead will probably run 10 or more seasons, yet never have an episode come close to being as good as its pilot. That's really hard to do. Can you think of any other long-running series where the pilot was ultimately the best episode? I would agree with you on The Walking Dead pilot, which set a really high bar. The show has occasionally come close to that neighborhood again, uh, especially some of the sort of Scott Gimble-written spotlight episodes like Clear and The Grove, but for the most part, it's been downhill from there. Um... That's a really, that's an inarguable one, I would say. Uh, there's some others that are more questionable. I asked some other TV critic friends. I talked to Feinberg and, and Mo Ryan and some other people. Um, Alias, the Alias pilot is perhaps the best episode of Alias, if only because it didn't have to do with deal with a lot of the mythology that was then created and going on that made the show more and more gibberish as it went along, even though that was awesome. Modern Family, I liked Modern Family the most at the pilot stage. I mean, they might have done some better episodes afterwards, but that pilot sort of felt like that was really the um, the symbiosis of everything that they were doing really well. Uh, Feinberg also argued maybe for the Friday Night Lights pilot. Friday Night Lights did a lot of amazing, amazing episodes, but certainly the way that Peter Berg directed that pilot and the, the feeling of it, and particularly the sequence at the end where they're cutting into Street's helmet with the, the mechanical saw in the emergency room while Saracen is having to play quarterback and scrambling for his life. Uh, in terms of a moment, I'm not sure that the show ever did any like sequence that was better than that. Lost, another J.J. Abrams-directed pilot. Fabulous Lost. I would probably pick another episode, but you could make an argument for that. There's not a lot. For the most part, if a show is around a long time, it tends to get better, or at the very least, you tend to understand the characters more. But it can happen, and certainly a lot of shorter-running shows, the best episode was the pilot, and it's all downhill from there, and people figure it out. Uh, finally, Kevin Olson asks, with the horrifically stupid revelation from this week's The Walking Dead, spoilers for this week's The Walking Dead, so if you haven't seen it, you might want to stop here, that Glenn is indeed not dead, what are some other all-time worst jerk-the-audience-around decisions that showrunners have made? Well, I just mentioned Lost, and I love Lost, but Lost was a show that loved to jerk its audience around. Uh, to a degree, I would say probably the most egregious of those, I, I refer to it often, is them not showing us what was inside the hatch at the end of season one after having teased that for the whole back half of that season, both on the show and in interviews, and that really drove me nuts. Um, it, yeah, other things that they did, even they sort of teased characters who might have been dead who weren't dead. So this is certainly not a Walking Dead only situation. Sons of Anarchy did this a lot. Sons of Anarchy unrung a lot of bells Probably the worst of those was when they did a whole episode building up to the idea that Juice was going to kill himself, and the episode ends with Juice hanging himself, and at the very last second, after you cut to the credits, you hear the sound of the branch breaking, and they... Ugh. 
that was a lame cop out. Um, Homeland a couple seasons ago, when it looked like Saul and Carrie had turned on each other and Carrie was institutionalized and it was them running a long con, that seemed again like sort of them hoodwinking the audience for not enough game to be worth it. And finally, you can't really discuss shows that jerk their audience around without mentioning How I Met Your Mother. You, you just can't. The How I Met Your Mother finale, everything about it. I mean, that show in general loved to mess with its audience. And the very pilot, the pilot episode, the, la the, the end of it is, and that's how I met your Aunt Robin. So we should have known right there, but uh, we kept watching, and it was really good for a long time, and then it really, really wasn't. I hope everybody had a happy Thanksgiving. I hope you have safe Black Friday shopping. Stay out of the malls, folks. Until next time, I'm Alan Seppenwall. See you in the next life, Jack. For breaking entertainment news and more, follow at HitFix on Twitter or visit HitFix.com.